Hey everyone, welcome to part 96 of my Pokemon game series in GMT. So in this video, we'll start implementing our cutscene actions and we'll use it to create a small cutscene like this. So in this cutscene, as you can see, we can move the player and we can show dialogues. So let's look at how to implement this. By the way, I started a new series on Patreon that covers how to make a 3D Pokemon game like Pokemon Legends Arceus in Unity. So if you're interested in making a 3D Pokemon game or a 3D RPG game in general, then you can check out this course on Patreon. So by becoming a Patreon, you can support this channel and get access to the 3D Pokemon series and get some other cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, some exclusive tutorials and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start implementing the cutscene actions. So first, in the cutscene action class, I'll create a new function for playing the cutscene. So this function will be a coroutine and I'll call it play. All right. And I'll also make it a virtual function so that we can override it from the subclasses. All right. So in the base class, this function won't have any implementation, but we'll implement it from the subclasses like dialog action and move actor action. Okay. So here I'll just write a heal break so that we won't get any errors. Okay. And let's go ahead and implement it from the subclasses. So first, I'll implement it in the dialog action. So if I type override, it will show me the functions that I can override. So I want to override the play function. Okay. And for the dialog action, we have to show this dialog from the play function. Right. So let me call dialog manager dot instance dot show dialog function and for the dialog I'll pass our dialog object all right and let me also add a yield return at the start so that it will wait for the dialog to complete okay so next let's go ahead and implement the move actor action so first let me override the play function from here and then in the play function we have to make the character move in these move patterns right so first i loop through all our move patterns all right so let me do that using a for each loop and inside the loop we'll use the character dot move function to move the character in that pattern okay and let me also add a yield return at the start so that we will wait for one movement pattern to complete before running the next one. Okay. So now we have implemented the move actor action and the dialogue action. So next from the cutscene class, we have to run these actions one by one. Right. So here I'll create another function called play. All right, and from this function, I loop through all our actions and play them one by one. Okay, so let me use a for each loop to loop through all our actions. And then I'll call action dot play to play that action. And let me also add a heal return at the start so that we'll wait for one action to complete before starting the next action. All right, so this will play all the actions in our cutscene. So next, when the cutscene is being played, we want to set the game state to cutscene so that nothing else will happen during a cutscene. Okay, so this cutscene state was created in the trainer battles video. We use the state while the trainer was walking towards the player to start a battle, right? So we can use the same state when our cutscene is being played. 
so before you start playing all the actions we have to set the state to cutscene and after all the actions are played we can set the state back to free roam right so in the game controller here i'll create a new function called start cutscene state all right and in this function i'll just set the game state to game state dot cutscene all right and next let me also create a function for starting the free roam state so that we can call it once we are done playing the cutscene okay so in this function i'll just set the state to game state dot free roam so now from the cutscene script before we start to play all the actions i'll call game controller dot instance dot start cutscene state okay and once we play all the actions i'll set the state back to the free roam state by calling start free roam state function okay so this is all we have to do for playing the cutscene actions so now let's go to unity and actually create a cutscene so here we already have a cutscene called test cutscene so let me just rename this to something like prevent leaving cutscene okay so as the name suggests this cutscene will be called when the player tries to leave the town so we can use this npc in the cutscene and make sure that the player doesn't leave the town okay so let me just place the npc somewhere around here so i'll just set the y to 9.8 and x to minus 0.5 just to make sure that the npc is at the center of the tile okay actually i'll move the npc a little more towards the left and when the player reaches here the npc should come talk to the player and prevent him from leaving the town okay so in our cutscene let's remove all the actions that we have right now okay and in this cutscene, we have to make the NPC walk towards the player and say some dialogue. Right. So the first action will be the move actor action. And here, the character that we want to move is this NPC. So let me just assign the NPC in the character slot. Okay. And in the move pattern, first I'll move the NPC up one tile. And then I'll move him towards the right by three tiles. Okay. So once the NPC completes the movement, we want to show a dialogue. So I'll add a dialogue action. And in this dialogue, I'll just say something like, Don't leave yet. Professor Oak was looking for you. Okay. So these are the two actions we need in our small cutscene. And we have to trigger this cutscene when the player reaches this tile. Right. So we have to add a collider to our cutscene object so we can trigger that. So let me go ahead and add a box collider 2D. Okay. And I'll place it over here. Let me just place it at 2.5 and 10.5 so that it's at the center of the tile and i'll go ahead and add an icon to it so that we can easily recognize it okay and let me just go ahead and disable this cuttable tree we have already completed its implementation okay so now we have to trigger the cutscene when the player steps on this collider so first i'll change the layer of the cutscene to triggers layer all right and then in the cutscene script i'll make a cutscene class implement the i player triggerable interface okay so let me use the control dot shortcut and implement 
everything we have in the interface so we have a property called trigger repeatedly and we have the on player triggered function so in the trigger repeatedly property i'll actually return false because we don't want to trigger the cutscene repeatedly okay and then in the on player triggered function we can call the play function and start playing the cutscene so let me go ahead and call the play function okay and before we call the play function i want to actually set this moving parameter of the player's animator to false we actually do that for all our triggerable objects right so if you take something like the story item or the portal here when the on player trigger is called we are setting this moving parameter of the animator to false to make the player stop the animation so let's also do that from the cutscene trigger okay so now our cutscene should be triggered when the player steps on this so let me just go to the gameplay scene and test this all right so if i go ahead and step on the cutscene trigger as you can see that it will play the cutscene okay so in the cutscene the npc is first moving towards the player and then saying the dialogue okay so next in the cutscene i also want the npc to take the player towards the professor's house so we should also be able to move the player in the cutscene right but right now the problem is in the move actor action cutscene we have to assign a character but the player character won't be there in all the scenes right we'll only have a single player character in the gameplay scene we won't have the player in any of the scenes so we can't assign the player character directly to the cutscene so we have to find a solution for that so we'll be doing that in the next video and in the next video we'll also make the player follow the npc to the professor's house all right so i'll stop the video here thanks a lot for watching if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so i'll see you in the next video